right, so we got short, sweet, and important for this video. What Q QA would you do on a new scanning tank? What is the reference chamber used for? And draw a percent depth dose with and without a reference chamber. So this is something that can be addressed in TG106. Important, again, um, always TG101, TG106, always mention what task groups are associated with this question. And specifically, it's good to even read TG106 because it will go not only in further detail, but probably mention tests I've already forgotten. So reference TG106, uh, review it. And so first things, uh, use distilled water. Ensure that no algae is in the tank. That's kind of for obvious regions, reasons, but in your hose or tank, even if you don't dry it out well, algae can grow. You could also use a small amount of chlorine to prevent that if you'd like. So ensure that your water is in room temperature. You just don't want big temperature shifts as you are scanning. So whether maybe it starts out really cold and then throughout your scanning it gets warm and that's going to potentially change some of your values. So ensure that there is a 5 cm over scan distance. So you don't want to max out your chamber or your tank dimensions by scanning the entire dimension. You want to have 5 cm over scan. Also, you want a tank that is 75 by 75 cm squared is recommended. So it's a pretty good size tank. Free movement of the X, Y, Z, and diagonal. So just ensure there's smooth movement, constant speed, that it can move in all directions. You also want accuracy and linearity over long distances. So accuracy plus linearity over the long distances that you're going to be scanning. Ensure the connectors work. So that's kind of pretty simple. You're going to know that as you are actually doing that. You want to ensure that as you move 10 cm, that it will actually move 10 cm. So uh, I'm just going to put accuracy of uh, scan length, I suppose. I'll put that, whatever it may be. You also want to ensure that the scanner, that the movement across the water is level. So that there's no just that the water is level, the scan is level as well. That's part of the mechanical test you do in the beginning, but something you definitely need to ensure. Also make sure that the movement vertical is perfect. So I'm going to put a vertical movement here, and this can be done with a string off of the the gantry actually, but this read TG106, it goes in detail how to do that, essentially because you may have your collimator here and you can attach a string because of gravity, not my drawing, that's horrible, but because of gravity, the string is going to be perfectly vertical and you can help verify that when your chamber is moving vertically, that it moves along that line. So it's not moving diagonally either. Horrible drawing, but give me a little break there. Finally, uh, or not finally, but you can use the jaw to ensure that the X and Y movement is straight as well. So you want to verify that X and Y and vertically the movement is straight. You need to know if you need the shift the PDD, or if the software is going to automatically do it. So TG106, important. This is something that I think they could ask, things that not everyone does. So it's important to know what to do in case they do ask it so you have some answers and you know how to just answer that question. Now, what is a reference chamber used for? So this removes instantaneous fluctuations or drifts in the incident beam output. So that is best described with a drawing of a PDD. And even if they don't necessarily ask for a PDD, by showing them what it would look like with and without really shows that you know what you're do doing, you understand the importance of the reference chamber. And I think it would really help get you some brownie points and get you to that highest value total for this exam and for this question. So say this is a normal PDD. This is with reference chamber. 
So as I mentioned, it's going to remove all those fluctuations within your reading. So it should be smooth. It should look nice. And then if you don't have it, you're going to see something. Now, the general trend, obviously, is going to look the same. You still see the same curve. And I mean, maybe I dramatize this a little bit, but it will look a lot more fuzzy. There will be a lot more fluctuations. And so knowing the two differences between them, I think, is important. And again, if you could demonstrate you know those, I think that will help you a lot. So short video for today. If you have any questions, comment below. Read TG106 and you'll be good to go.